Hey everybody, this is uh, David Skarika here. So um, gonna do it. So we're gonna start our promotion finally on Friday. Sorry for all the delays here. Um, I'm in Spain right now. I'm gonna. I've done all these little videos both in England and Spain. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit them all together. They're mostly like lifestyle type videos, just about food. Um, you know, just walking around the streets. Um, I did. Have, I promise. I, think I got this great view at the rooftop of my hotel here in Spain. But the problem is, there's always people there packed you know at the bar people drinking whatever uh a lot of drunk brits um and um so it's tough for me to do a little market video or even a little video you know so the, it is a beautiful view at uh, this hotel is my this is not my last full day i'm checking out on thursday so um i will try to do at least a short 30 second video um i think the pool opens at 10 i check out at noon tomorrow so maybe I'll try to do a little short video uh, in the morning before people get there. Um, yeah, but then, you know, what I'm gonna do is I think I'll just do, you know, you can do story videos on uh, YouTube. So I think I'll just upload it to my stories and I'll send you the link to those and then I'll just edit everything together from like England and Spain, right? So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna do this quickly. I just wanna show you, cause right now I, I think it's really interesting what's going on in the markets, you know, it's kind of quiet. I know in the markets, you know, we had a bit of a sell off, but, um, Let's share the screen here. Um, one second, I'm trying to find, I got so much stuff here. Uh, uh, desktop, I don't wanna do the whole desktop. So I'm just looking for, yeah, this is the one here, I think. Yeah, okay, so yeah, we're sharing the screen here. And so what I think is going on, which is really interesting is that I think, you know, you've seen, this is the TSX here. We've seen, you know, these juniors have done really poorly. You can see, oh, um, you know, since, um, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's done, done, done. It says done really uh, poorly since the, um, uh, yeah, you know, since the um, the, the, the top here, are mark, you know, since the top a few months ago. So, what I'm trying to show you actually, this is just the TSX, right? Not um, the, not the juniors, but what I'm going to show you here is what's interesting is this. It really reminds me of what's going on right now. As uh, the summer, you can see the TSX peaked in March, April, uh, the summer of 2008. Now, no, no, no decline is ever going to be the same, et cetera. But when I was looking at some of these charts, uh, so we're, <coughs> we're going to go back to 2006 and just go to 2008 and the crash. The way that things are trading really is similar. So you can see the TSX here peaked again. A little later, June, July, I think you said nothing's going to be exactly the same this time. It's more like April, May. And then it kind of trended lower in the summer. And I remember that the juniors back then, um, um, uh, the, um, it, um, the venture exchange, they, they really came off and were like, this, it was like this no volume summer and there was no bids and nothing was going on. It's because liquidity was starting to tighten because of the financial um, uh, markets. So I'm going to find that quickly here, TSX Venture. Right, they show you all the uh, highs and lows. I think it's, I'm just gonna try it, CD and I think that might be it. Yeah, perfect, yeah. So you can see again in 2008, like I said, it kind of was just trending lower all through 2008. <laughs> and then um, and then kind of started falling off the cliff. It really started accelerating. And I think we're starting to do a bit of that a little earlier. Again, nothing is gonna be exactly the same. And then of course I fell off a cliff here. So. Um, I don't know. I think we're a little ahead in terms of the amount of decline we've seen in the juniors. Part of the reasons is the juniors kind of peaked at the market then, and the juniors have kind of peaked ahead of the market now. But that's really what I'm kind of like sensing here, um, that we're kind of like like the summer of 2008. And of course, we're going to see two more Fed right hikes. Um, and, th and then everything kind of rolled over, um, you know, really accelerating to August, September, October. So then this is the S&P 500 here. And you get and same thing, you can see that, like, you know, it had this decline, had this little bounce here, you know, in July, and then kind of really rolled over in the fall. So I think our little bounce happened a little earlier this time. But this is the kind of bounce I think we're seeing in the market right now. We'll go to the S&P right now just to show you this. Um, and, and, and that will, you know, show you that. But I think I got the feeling, again, with those two rate hikes that are going to happen in July and September, being 100 to 125 basis points. And there's basically right now 100% chance of 125. Uh, over those next two meetings and actually out of that 100 percent, there's about a 30 percent chance it could be 150 so um you know and i i even think out of that 30 percent, i think half of that so about 15 percent, is like it could be you know um 175 
So I, I do think we're going to see that. Like I said, as always, I'll show you the two-year treasury quickly. But I think we're kind of in this scenario, right? We were in the summer of 2008. Markets falling. People are kind of a little disinterested because it is the summertime, uh, especially after COVID. You know, in a lot of places, like in Spain, a lot of these hotels weren't open since 2019 summer, you know, because they had more, you know, they had stricter laws here in Europe. So, you know, a lot of people are traveling. A lot of people are kind of ignoring this stuff too. And then of course we have crude and crude of course spiked, you know, just like it did, you know, bottom here, you can see in 2007 at 50 and it went to almost 150. And again, during the summer, it slowly began to sell off and then really escalated to the downside for the rest of the year. So I'm not saying that's going to happen now, but let's go look at all these markets now. All right, we'll start with the S&P. And of course, the S&P, rather than peaking a year earlier, it peaked you know, about half a year ago. Oh, let's see, I just want to get a two-year chart. So I don't want to go back that far. And the S&P, we can see, again, kind of slowly rolling over here, you know, into uh, 2020. And, um, you know, we can see this little bounce here. And it looks to me like this little bounce, just like this bounce, this bounce, this bounce, is basically over with and is going to roll over and break this, this 3650 here. And the next move to lower will be to like 3,400. Now, if we get a more significant move, like with a kind of crash or not crash, but like uh, like, like like 2008 in the fall, we could drop to, third, I think, 3,000 on the S&P, which would be about another 20% from here. Um, you know, And I think that's when the Fed, quote unquote, pivots. Now, I think the first pivot is just going to not increasing rates anymore. I think because of like inflation being so ingrained right now for so long, they're going to be much more apprehensive to just drop rates to zero and print money again, right? So, um, and then again, if we look at oil, oil fell a lot yesterday. You can see again, oil does look like if it doesn't hold here, it is it has topped in short term and we could see a move lower and because we're seeing demand destruction. So I think that's the thing to watch out here. And I don't see a 2008 scenario or 2020 scenario, obviously 2020 went negative, but I don't see that scenario. So here, here you can see the support level here. Here, sixty-five, seventy dollars a bit, kind of um, uh, panic selling move, and then and then you're going to want to really look at there. That's why I've strayed away from the oil stocks and trace and chasing them. Um, I think there's a reason compared to oil uh, as well. So um, um, so anyhow, that's basically it here, and you can see this is the oil index here. But again, let's go look at the CDN. And again, it, it peaked you know, really in early 2021, and we can see it slowly moved down. And then remember, I was talking about that escalation. You can see the juniors really escalating to the downside. So there's a little, looks like they're a little head here, but like um, it just, I just see there's no volume. Like there's some juniors I, I was looking at, um, you know, that I don't have recommended that I was looking at just taking some money off. And I just, I, I was doing that as recently as, you know, just even May, June. And it's like, you know, I just stopped doing it because the bids and, and the asks and the liquidity is just not there. So you can see how terrible this market is. You know, the CDNX is down almost 40, 50% since its 2021 top. It's probably going to a bottom ahead of the market, but I still think it's going to be kind of a dead summer. So um, if something you want to do tax loss selling, I see no problem with that here because I don't really see things coming back you know, till maybe later in the fall here, you know, and of course with tax law selling, I think you, there's like a two or three month uh, period that if you buy like two or three months after you sell, you can still write off the tax law selling. So, you know, some of these, you know, it, it companies you wouldn't want to sell, but, you know, you know, uh, but, but you might have to. So anyhow, you can see, yeah, after this big run, let's actually go back three years so we can see the financial crisis. Yeah, we can see after the, oh, so I did the Dow for some reason, but let's look at the CNX. Yeah, we triple quad or almost quadrupled in value. We get I could see 500. That's a net out of the question. That's kind of like the pre, you know, um, COVID kind of levels. There's still be another 20% or roughly from here, you know. So I know it's tough. And then of course. Gold as well. And I'll show you the 2808, you know, thing. You see gold here. Yeah, if gold does break this kind of 1650s to 1700 level, you know, it could go back to, you know, 1500 or something. You know, I know I'm a long term gold bull, but you also have to look at it this way. Now, it is very oversold. Look at the RSI, even more oversold than it was 
in 2020. So maybe that's a sign we're bottoming here. My goal positions I see as long term right now, I'd probably add to them. But this is why I have not been doing junior deals. This is why in my marketing service I do with Mike Swanson um, or, or his marketing service that I help him out with. Um, this is why we haven't done a lot of gold deals because we're seeing, you know, I just fell in the last few months. It was obvious to me when the Russian invasion did not cause this big breakout in gold. And I was a little more apprehensive. That's why you haven't seen me getting into stuff. But I think definitely, again, now it's July. All we got to do is wait two or three months, you know, it'd be September, October. That's the time to really to start to look at these things. And hopefully we'll have some really good cheap deals kind of light up the side. So again, I want to look, you tell you, know, look at gold again in 2008, we go back and we look at gold in 2008. This is 2006 to 2008. Yeah. And then we can see, you know, gold again peaked similar kind of like earlier in the year, had a failed rally actually right about this time of year in July. And like, you can see now this doesn't really look that bad because gold was, you know, 500 and it went to a thousand, then it went back to 700. But the gold stocks really got crushed again in that time frame. Let's go look at the CDNX. Yeah, you, know, you can see again how it got crushed. Like, um, yeah, it went from thirty two hundred to seven hundred. And then if we look at like, um, as well, totally crushed. It came back quite quickly, right? And that's kind of what I'd look at. That once that pivot happens, and once it's obvious, you stop raising rates, which I think will happen later in this year after that. After the next one hundred twenty. Uh, five to 150 uh, basis point rate hikes. I think that's what this is kind of thing. But until then, who knows? Like, where are we in this gold stock drop? Are we like where we were last August, September, right? Are we, you know, here? Who knows, right? Like if we were where we were last August, uh, September, when the HUI was like 300, it still dropped another 50%, you know? And uh, it, it only stayed, you know, stayed at that level for like a month. So you know, that's, that's where we don't know. And of course that will be a great buying opportunity. So that's what that, and that's why I am shorting right now. Cause if you short, we'll make money and be able to rotate in. And then the, it will also hedge your losses. If you do want have long-term gold and silver holdings. And like, for example, let's go look at um, silver back then. And we'll look at silver now. Right. So yeah, you can see silver halved in price, basically, you know, during that whole decline. And of course there's a great buy down there when it's $9. Well, let's look, go look at silver now. Yeah, silver now is basically down. If it were to half in price from its recent high, which is March, that would mean silver, you know, $13, $14 an ounce. And of course, that would be a great buy. So that's why I'm doing that. So just to quickly go over it, I have really five shorts right now, main shorts I'm focusing on. And here's what I'm doing with shorts. I'm either focusing on stuff that's going to be hit by consumer spending, higher rates eating to people, uh, uh, you know, the amount of money they have to spend, lower asset prices because housing is coming down. Um, and of course, higher energy costs. So Rick, they did report some okay revenues. You can see it's come up a little bit, but of course, you know, as, as I've said over and over again, first place I guess is, is the strip club because that's total disposable income. Tends to be younger guys too. So who, you know, don't make as much money as say middle-aged people. So that, that, that would really hit them as well. You know, the higher rates, the higher gas costs, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that, that's one here. Um, I, I own the 50s. You know, it did, it has, you know, you can see the move isn't that huge though. I think we shorted it right about here, right before this big, the, the big drop or the little, that drop happened here. And if you go look at a longer term chart, look, Ricks, you can kind of see a big topping pattern in the five-year chart. See right here, kind of broke that support here at 60. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we go back to the pre-COVID levels, which is 25, which would be a really nice profit in our puts. So then Churchill Downs is another one. It's the one gambling stock that's kind of held up. You can see it, it kind of, Went it went slightly below support, but not enough. So about 175, 180 is the support. And if it breaks that, um, um, you know, it could go lower. And then we have this is from Capital Group, and um, this is the, the Canadian housing bubble stock. And then finally, we have Moody's, which of course you know is hit by um, higher corporate rates. So anyhow, I, that's it. I'm just going to leave it at that. And, um, uh, and, and, uh, and um, watch out for the next video and tomorrow.